everyone. Thanks for staying in the middle of afternoon. You've seen great speaker on stage. Um, and uh, tonight we have uh, Tony with us, uh, Dirk from Upland, Gordon, uh, Gordon from uh, Engine Block, and Vita from Somnium Space. Um, can I get the clicker, maybe? So I'll start the panel on this uh, parallel universe and virtual world by asking them to introduce uh, them and their project quite quickly. So let's start with uh, you, Vita. Okay. Hi, I'm Vita from Somnium Space. Uh, so we're building this uh, persistent Opal social VR world with a full blockchain-based economy from ERC20 tokens to NFTs. And with the virtual reality, we're basically bringing uh, NFTs to life. And we're across all the hardware platforms from uh, like uh, head-mounted displays to Android to Oculus Go. And uh, we have a desktop builder dedicated. Let's go on. Whoa. OK, our project Sandbox, it's a decentralized gaming platform where you can empower creators through NFTs to make their own games and monetize them on the blockchain. So you can think of it like a Minecraft on the blockchain. You can make games, create games, own land, explore land, earn sand, and play in multiplayer and social experiences. Oh, I think they didn't get the right slide. Anyway, let's move to... <laughs> yeah, no, no, but uh, it was not the right slide anyway. So, yeah, you... sorry about that. Uh, we walked on slide and didn't put the right version online. Tony, would you like to tell us about your project uh, then? Yes, sorry, that's not mine. <laughs> but, yeah, um... no, it's... Let's My name is Tony Pierce. I'm the co-founder of Reality Gaming Group. Uh, we develop mobile games. Um, I've been in the mobile space for many years. And the latest game we have out is called Reality Clash. A Reality Clash is an augmented reality combat game. Think Pokemon Go meets Call of Duty. Uh, it came out a few months ago. It's heading up to nearly 100,000 downloads very quickly. And it's launching in the US next month. However, what makes this different is it connects to an online marketplace where you can download NFTs. In our case, they're guns. So you can download the game on the App Store, you can buy in-game items through Apple or Google, or you can look really cool, go online, buy these limited edition weapons, download them, and be the envy of all your friends. So we're one of the first mobile games companies that has a deal with Apple where you can buy in-game items outside of the App Store, download them into the game, use them, withdraw them, and sell them. Um, so that's me. Thank you. Dirk, would you like to tell us more? OK, with no slide. So my name is uh, Dirk Lute. I'm a co-founder of the company called Upland Me. Uh, it's a virtual property trading game based on uh, real-world addresses. So you can buy, trade, and sell those um, properties. And currently, we have launched in San Francisco um, the idea about the game is that you, um, once you bought a property, you start earning our in-game currency called Apex. And in that way, we can develop a real, you know, true ownership and a real true economy on the side. Um, we want to go really um, to the mass market. That's the reason everything we created was really to obfuscate all the difficult blockchain layer. That means uh, you can easily sign in with email. Password, uh, we even have iPhone and Android apps. Uh, you can pay with a fiat, with credit card, with PayPal, or, or in-app purchases. But of course, we also accept crypto. Um, so um, currently, we're in San Francisco. You can do collections there, co collect multiple properties to increase your earnings. And soon, we'll be launching also in other cities. Great. Thank you. Gordon? Hey, I'm Gordon Meyer. I am the founder of EngineBlock. We are a consultancy for startups in the AR, VR, and blockchain space. Uh, we help startups to craft the perfect pitch, whether that's to investors or to consumers, and crafting the go-to-market strategy. I'm also president of the VR AR Association here in New York City. All right, let's start with the first question. Can any one of you tell me why is NFT a major game changer for virtual worlds and universes? I'll start with, um, I can only put it towards Reality Clash. So what I find very exciting with um, 
AR and VR, but if I go back to my game, the AR part is when you go into combat. And when you go into combat, you open up a virtual reality portal and literally walk inside it. You walk into a video game. And you see, when you see people playing it, it's hysterical. And what I love about the NFT part is you can hide NFTs inside the virtual world. And when you step out, you can go around the map of your city and find NFTs, get the NFT, come back to your base without getting killed, and then you can withdraw the NFT and sell it for, for real fiat currency. So now the game has real world value inside an AR, VR world that you are physically playing in. And I think that is kind of groundbreaking and, and just, just fun and taking it to more of a mass market. Uh, yeah, maybe I'd add to that. So what, what's really interesting is uh, with the NFTs, that this whole, what we've heard many times is about this true ownership, but true ownership also uh, conveys to the users he, he can really do other things in the long term with it. And that means he can become really creative and you can see things, what you've seen usually in non-blockchain games like Minecraft, how creative people become, became. But now they can become even more creative and do things uh, what, what weren't possible before because they know once they invested lots of time and maybe money to it, there's always the liquidity aspect to it. They are able to sell it on some kind of marketplace or to other players. Which, uh, gives them, um, which gives the whole NFT space or this blockchain space a high credibility and uh, momentum. Hey, you know, for us at NGBlock, the, the really interesting thing about NFTs plus XR, plus immersive realities, as we head towards what we're calling uh, sightline convergence, when computer screens go away and your computer world becomes what you're seeing as you're looking out into the real world. Where NFTs play a really interesting role is about identity. By show of hands, has anyone changed the color on their emojis, on their thumbs up emoji, or smiley face emojis, or anything else on your, on your phone, right? Because your personal identity is important to you, and you want to be able to reflect yourself digitally as close to reality as possible. And it's only really with NFTs, when we look to a future in virtual reality or augmented reality, NFTs are going to lock down your identity and to your playable character such that it's yours and yours alone, right? And we're going to get rid of the fraud. We're going to get rid of identity theft. We're going to address a lot of the problems that are happening in gaming today where one in seven playable assets in games are victims of fraud when, when traded on secondary markets, right? And so that plus AR and VR creates a world that you then can own and you can represent yourself the way you want. Yeah, and uh, VR brings, uh, gives the NFTs a real use case. Like for example, in Somnium Space, we have a kayak and you can buy the kayak, you own the kayak, and you can actually use the kayak. You, you put it on our water and you move your hands with your trackers and you basically are in your own kayak and kayaking on a sea. And this is your NFT and it has a huge value. Okay, thank you for that. So, I think we've heard more and more the world metaverse recently as many platforms, are, including ours, are arising and adoption. There's been over a million dollar worth of land that's been bought last week, for example. Could you define what is this metaverse in your opinion? And should we talk just about one single metaverse that encompasses many virtual worlds or multiples? So, I th well, I think, in my opinion, there's only one metaverse that's somehow inherent in, the, in this world. And, um, and actually, as we are sitting here and there are many other companies who are creating their own universe in a certain sense. And I think what we would be great if all those universes one day will be somehow connected together. And this could be, you know, let's say when you're a player, you have a, you have a special item in a game, you can go and check it out. You go to another universe and, um, and then you actually have some kind of transformator which allows you to maybe have the same look and feel of that universe and then you can check in into that world and act in that world and then again go to another world and so on. So that would be awesome if you know the whole universes of these worlds connect into one one metaverse. Do, do we have my slide? I don't know if it if it's in the deck or we're having problems with it because because Engine Block we just released the first ever landscape of the VR, AR, and blockchain industry. We're tracking every company in the space. 
So when we talk about, you know, will there be these walled gardens, if you will, worlds that people will be locked into, uh, for, for one thing, my answer is probably no, right? When we look at video game systems today, they, walk, they, they lock you into a walled garden. But along comes blockchain, and one thing that blockchain does incredibly well is it takes a fucking wrecking ball to walled gardens. It breaks down every single barrier. So whether you're locked into PlayStation or locked into Xbox or whatever, along comes blockchain and NFTs and says, no, 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 no. I own it, it's mine, and PlayStation can't t stop me from taking my playable character out of the game and putting it somewhere else. Are we gonna have lots of playable worlds out there? Of course, it'll be just like changing the channel. Do I wanna jump into any one of the worlds that are currently in development? Whether that's Verse and one of the founders is here, or Decentraland uh, creating 3D immersive worlds or Somnium space. Um, all of those worlds are being built, but at, at the end of the day, I as a player can jump from game to game, and in the same way as I as a player want to play a r car racing game, and I love Forza, and I love other car racing games out there, but if I own my car, and I tune my car, and I invest time and energy racing my car, I want to be able to take it out of the game and port it into any racetrack I want. There's a company out there called Crypto Cars that lets you do that. And so we're looking at the business models of the video gaming industry, currently an $11 billion industry in terms of downloadable content. And we're changing that business model such that the economics are fundamentally disrupted. I mean, what we did with other VR worlds is basically we did this teleport where you can teleport from Somnium space to other VR worlds. So we very much encourage the multiverse and the metaverse and basically all VR worlds or virtual worlds working together and being able to teleport between each other. And that's where the NFTs come in because we can have your avatar as an NFT and travel with it across the whole metaverse from one game to another. Just amazing. Do you think we'll see more initiative towards this cross-gaming interoperability? Who should be leading the way there to enable this multiverse, metaverse, and, uh, and more utility for the NFTs behind? I mean, interoperability is, is definitely crucial, and we're going to see it happen. I mean, we've got companies that are even here today, like OpenSea, where you can take your, your NFT collectibles and put them up into a marketplace. So if they all came from different games, it would make sense that from a consumer point of view, there will flat out be an expectation that I can port that into any VR or AR world that I want. And if I can't, if Apple comes out with glasses that looks like these, and they say, sorry, your NFT... Uh, characters that, are, that you bought on OpenSea, you can't bring it into the game. I think the consumer is going to balk, and I think eventually they're going to change their mind. But I also think it's interesting, as these walled gardens get developed, look at Decentraland, do yourself a favor, and Google Decentraland, and take, away, take a look at what it looks like, and the success they've had selling over $30 million of property within the game, and then take a look at the graphics of Facebook's Horizon. It's remarkably similar. And think about this, Facebook is developing their own blockchain. Will they have NFTs in Horizon? Maybe, probably. They're probably looking at Decentraland and saying, we want to do that too and maybe we can 10x that or 100x that or 1000x that, right? This is going to be big. There's going to be major players looking to create as many walled gardens as possible, but are they going to be successful ultimately? No. I think... Um they, I totally agree with what you're saying. Everything's turned on its head, and the power is now coming away from the publisher and into the player and the content holder's hands. And it's interesting, having been in games for many years, you go to conferences and you know, there'd be an EA stand and an Activision stand and a Sony stand, and they'd all compete with each other. And it would be willy-waving, and the biggest marketing spend will eventually win out to the user. What's change now and what I really love about blockchain gaming is everyone is going to share the same customer and everyone can help each other out. It's not about marketing and selling one game, it's about the, the content being able to move around the universe and, and, and bring it back, the power back into the player. And moreover, the publishers are publishing to all major platforms anyway. So a, a large share of the, uh, of the games that you can buy on Xbox versus PlayStation are effectively the same fucking thing anyway, right? So why can't I just port my car from Xbox to PlayStation if I'm playing the same because game? Because they don't want you to, right? They want to yeah. keep you yeah. in that silo we'll, we'll see box. how long that lasts. That, and that's why 
big games publishers are generally very nervous about blockchain games. They want to keep you in that box. They want to keep you in that game. The Fortnite's dread is the fact that you can buy something in that game and take it out and sell it to your friend. They do not want a secondary market. They're very happy with their billion dollars a year, thank you. But what's going to change it is users telling Fortnite that sod your game, this game's just as good and I can take my sword from here to there and sell it. And, and so the consumers will change the look, way that big look, publishers... Look, a, a kid bought a player skin on Fortnite for 700 bucks. Uh, all right. At, what happens when they shut down those servers? You think that guy doesn't want his player skin with him? Right? So, uh, only 30 seconds, a word for the end. Uh, what do you think is going to be the future? Today, Decentraland launch. We have platforms like uh, Somnium Space coming up. Sandbox did successful and pre sale What are we going to see next, next year? So, I'm, I'm very optimistic about the future, right? I think what we will go to see is that there will be completely new kinds of jobs, uh, whatever created, what we are not aware of, right? Like what the web created, you know, the job of a data scientist, you know, uh, those new uh, non-fungible uh, blockchain games, they will create new jobs, uh, which will, you know, hopefully contribute to a thriving economy. Yeah, there'll be people basically making money in virtual worlds and virtual reality. There'll be businesses popping up that we even uh, cannot imagine right now. And uh, the future also for me is the, the, the big metaverse with all the virtual worlds and virtual reality worlds. Listen, in the near future, actually this year, right, my glasses will be AR, right? There's a company out of uh, Toronto that makes glasses that look exactly the, the same fucking thing as this, only there's a projector inside and you can augment your reality at your sight line. What's going to... In the very near future, call it next year, call it two years from now, if I have a playable character and I want my friends to see me as my character as I'm walking down 6th Avenue or through Times Square, that's how they will see me, right? You can be your game character on the street in Times Square. And that's right around the corner, right? That's technologically possible today. So at what point will, will we be seeing that from, on a mass adoption scale? It'll be interesting, but there sure as hell are a lot of gamers who love their characters who want that to happen. Amazing. I'm looking forward to this future. All right, a big round of applause for panelists today. Thank you for Thank your you. attention. Thanks.